Hi everyone, this is Dini and today we're going to learn how to make homemade croissants. So the first step is to make the dough and for that we need to activate our yeast. In a bowl, combine warm milk and honey and stir to dissolve and then stir in your yeast and let it activate for about 10-15 minutes. Now you know your yeast is active when it starts to become frothy and bubbly and when it's activated you're ready for the next step. To your yeast add water, sugar, melted butter, AP flour and then finally the salt. Mix the ingredients to combine to form a scraggly dough. Then knead the dough until it's nice and smooth. Now I am making a double batch of dough so I'm using a stand mixer to knead the dough but for a single portion you can absolutely knead the dough by hand. Once you have a nice smooth dough ball, place it into a oiled mixing bowl and then cover it with plastic wrap and let it proof in a warm place until it's about doubled in size. Once the dough is proofed, we're ready to shape the dough. Since I made double the amount of dough, I'm only using half of the dough for this video. The dough needs to be shaped into a rectangle that's about 7 inches by 10 inches. Use a parchment paper that is folded into a 7 by 10 rectangle to help shape the dough by rolling it inside that parchment paper that you can use as a guide. Wrap the dough with plastic wrap and then let it chill in the fridge or freezer. So the next step is to make the butter block. Laminating dough with this butter block is what will give the croissants all of its beautiful layers. The butter should be cold straight out from the fridge but it needs to be pliable and there are two ways to do this. The first is to really whack the butter block with a rolling pin so that it becomes more pliable while still being cold. And the second method is to place the cold butter in a stand mixer and mix it for just a few minutes until it becomes pliable and spreadable but still cold, like you see here. Both methods are correct and you can use whichever way you like. Once the butter is ready, we're ready to shape it into a block that is about 5 inches by 6 inches which is actually just under half the size of the dough that we shaped earlier. I use a parchment paper that is folded into the size I need like a packet to help me shape the butter block. I spread the butter inside, fold over the parchment paper so the butter is enclosed fully and then use a rolling pin to evenly spread the butter inside the parchment paper packet. Once that's done, then I transfer it into the fridge so that it can chill for a little bit as well. Please use a good quality butter for this recipe if you can, ideally with an 84% fat content or higher so that the butter will be very easy to work with because a butter with a higher fat content is more pliable. Plus, good butter will taste better and that will make your croissants more delicious too. Before we start the lamination process, we first have to enclose the butter block in the dough. It is really, really important that the butter layer always be cold throughout the whole process of making croissants, but still remain pliable. Both the dough and the butter must be cold and pliable so that they will roll out smoothly to create perfect laminated layers. Okay, so let's enclose the butter in the dough. If the butter block is not pliable, use your rolling pin to tap it firmly all over the surface to make it more pliable. Take the chilled dough out of the fridge and place it on a lightly floured surface. Make sure that it is about 7 inches by 10, 10 and a half inches. Unwrap and place the chilled pliable butter block on one half of the dough and then fold over the dough to fully enclose the butter block. The dough and the butter should be flexible and not break when you bend it lightly like this. Traditional croissants are laminated in three steps, but to make it easier, we will be laminating in two stages instead. Our first lamination is the double fold. Lightly flour the surface and place the croissant dough with the shorter edge placed towards you. The width of the dough is about 5 inches and while maintaining the width, roll out the dough to about 16 to 20 inches. When rolling out the dough, be gentle. If you press too hard, you risk mixing the dough and the butter layers together and losing the laminated layers. Trim the edges just a little bit. And here's a quick overview of what the double fold will look like. First, fold in one edge about two to three inches. 
Then fold the opposite end of the door so that the two edges are flush together. Next, fold the door in half and just press the door firmly so that the layers will stick together. The first lamination is now done. Wrap the croissant dough in plastic wrap and place it back in the fridge for about 30 minutes to 60 minutes. This is so that the butter can cool down again and the dough can rest as well. Okay, it's time for the second lamination and for that we will be doing the single fold. Here's a quick overview of what the single fold should look like. Take the chilled dough out of the fridge and then place it on a lightly floured surface. To make the butter more pliable, firmly tap or gently press all over the dough on both sides. With the shorter edge towards you, roll out the dough to about 15 inches in length. Try to maintain the width of the dough again, which should be between 4 to 6 inches. Again, trim the edges just a little bit and then fold over one third of the dough over the middle. Next, fold the opposite one third of the dough on top, creating a three layer stack of dough. Press it gently to make sure that the layers will stick together. The lamination is now done. Wrap your croissant dough in plastic wrap and return it back to the fridge for about 30 to 60 minutes. To cut our dough into croissants, we must roll it out first. This is called sheeting the dough and we will be doing this in two stages. First, place the dough on a lightly floured surface. Gently press the dough all over on both sides to make the butter more pliable and easy to roll out. Now at this stage, the dough should be rolled out until it has a width of about 9 inches and the thickness of the dough should be about 1 centimeter or half an inch. If you find that it is hard to roll out the dough because it's shrinking on you, then stop rolling out the dough. Wrap the dough in plastic wrap and put it back in the fridge for about 30 to 60 minutes so that the gluten can relax, even if it's not at the right thickness. Forcing the dough to roll out will cause the butter and dough layers to mix and the laminated layers will be lost. Once the dough is rolled out, Wrap the dough in plastic wrap again and let it rest in the fridge to relax the gluten for about 30 to 60 minutes. This is really important as it will make it easier to roll out the dough in the second stage. And in the second stage, we will be rolling the dough until it's about 4 to 5 millimeters thick or one fifth of an inch, which is how thick the dough should be to cut into portions. With the smallest amount of flour, roll out the croissant dough until it reaches a thickness of about 4 to 5 millimeters or one fifth of an inch. The width of the dough should be about 9.5 to 10 inches and use only just enough flour and keep the dough moving to make sure that it isn't sticking to the work surface and that you're rolling it out into an even thickness throughout. Trim the dough along the long edges of the croissant dough sheet so that you have neat, sharp edges. But make sure that you have an even width of 9 to 9.5 inches on your sheet of dough as well. Then, measure 3.5 to 4 inch intervals along one of the long sides of your dough and then mark it. Repeat that on the opposite side as well, but stagger the markings so that each mark is in the middle of two marks on the opposite side. Here's an image overlay to show you how to mark and cut the croissant dough so that it's easy for you to follow. You can find this image on the blog as well. Cut the dough into triangles along the marks shown in the video and then make sure to use a very sharp knife to make clean cuts. Each triangle piece of dough should be about 3.5 to 4 inches at the base and 9 to 9.5 inches in length. With this recipe, we should get about 6 triangles to make 6 croissants. To shape into croissants, Take one piece of dough and make a small 1 cm cut in the middle of the triangle base. Gently pull the two edges to create a wider base and roll the croissant dough tightly. After the first few tight rolls, smoothly roll up the dough all the way, making sure to keep the tip of the triangle centered at all times. Line a half sheet baking tray with parchment paper and place the croissants on top. Place each croissant on the baking sheet while making sure that the tip of the dough is underneath. 
This will ensure that the croissant will not unravel as it proofs and bakes. Remember to leave plenty of space in between the croissants so that they have the space to expand during proofing and baking. Cover the croissants loosely with plastic wrap or a baking tray cover. Leave the croissants in a warm place to proof around 25 Celsius, 77 Fahrenheit until it doubles in size. The butter will melt at 29 Celsius, 85 Fahrenheit and above, so be mindful of that. When the croissants have proofed, it will be very pillowy and wobble when shaken. Take a look at this wobble action. While the croissants are proofing, preheat the oven to 190 Celsius, 375 Fahrenheit conventional oven settings for at least 30 minutes before the croissants are ready to be baked. Brush the proofed croissants with an egg wash, but do this very gently with a very soft pastry brush as the croissants are very, very delicate. Bake the croissants in the preheated oven for about 20 to 30 minutes until they turn a beautiful golden brown. Depending on your oven, you may need to turn the tray once halfway through the baking time as well. Well, there you have it, freshly baked croissants. Resist the urge to eat hot croissants and let them cool on a wire rack for at least a few minutes to allow the crumb to set. There is nothing quite like eating a freshly baked croissant that is so flaky, so buttery and so delicious, especially when you made it yourself. You can actually hear the crunch when you bite into it or cut into it too. Get the entire detailed recipe with pro tips troubleshooting guides on my website theflavorbender.com ask me any questions in my comment section and let me know if you made homemade croissants too until then happy baking